Uh, all right, Bob. So, what are some of the common issues that people are people wind up asking you about uh, about on thermal spray? Yeah, that's that's a great question, Justin. One of the common problems that I hear about is something called porosity. And uh, you know, first of all, what is porosity? Be a you know, what what does that even mean? Well, there's a real simple way of seeing that. So, if you put up this first picture, I'll show you something that's not a thermal spray coating, but it gives you a good idea of what porosity is. This is a piece of Swiss cheese. And see those holes in there? You can imagine if that was representative of the thickness of the coating and you had those holes in there, that's what we call porosity. People get this oftentimes in thermal spray and it, it doesn't look good. And sometimes it can, in, in, uh, it can be a problem for the quality of the coating and the coating lasting and even just the appearance. If there's a little bit too much porosity, it, it, it doesn't look good on the surface. No offense to you, but this might be my favorite kind of porosity, uh, the, the old cheese porosity. I'm a big fan. <laughs> oh, yeah. And I'll tell you what, there's, uh, you know, in Pittsburgh here, we have the Strip District, which is the old uh, warehousing district. And you can go up there and you can get like this really good Swiss cheese that just melts in your mouth. It's not like mm. the stuff you get in the grocery store. But anyway, <laughs> so uh, what's some common types of porosity? If you pop up the next slide here, we'll, we'll take a look at that. So what you see here is uh, what we call the different types of porosity. Some, and it's actually some other defects in the coating too. So you can see there's what's called the closed pore porosity. There's a little hole in there. It's in the middle. It doesn't hurt anything. It's just the hole in the in the coating, um, and it's not nothing's happening there. Uh, halfway down there, you see something called a through pore. Well, if that's vertical, that's a real problem because you can get um, things penetrating down to the base material to the interface of the coating that you don't want. And that could end up causing the coating to small eventually. And there's some other things in there where we have what's called uh, the uh, unmelted particles, and you'll have some inclusions, an oxide inclusion, and uh, sometimes you get cracks. So these are all kind of some of the, these are some of the problems you'll see with the quality of coatings. But the one I get asked about very often is, do we have too much porosity? This is uh, it's one of my favorite cartoon represent representations for thermal spray. And this came out of the Thermal Spray Society handbook. Um, I want to give them credit. It's their picture. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And you can see here that it's a representation of you can see the round particles coming down. You can actually turn that any direction you want. And these are the molten particles. And as they hit, they splat. So, like, you know, if you have a bowl of water and you drop a, your Cheerios in there or a bowl of milk, you drop your Cheerios in there, how the water splashes up or the milk will splash up. So that's kind of a good representation. And what you can see there is sometimes you'll get a particle that's uh, solidifying before it hits. Now that could be for one of two reasons. There could be many reasons, but two of the reasons would be if you're spraying a powder and a powder doesn't fully melt before it hits, it can end up getting trapped in there. So you'd have a, an unmelted particle. Or if you're spraying with wire and you have your spray distance too far back, the molten particle solidified before it hit. Either one of those can cause a shadowing effect where you can end up with some porosity behind that. And that's sometimes what we'll see is, is a problem. This next picture, it's, it's, this is a, called a, a scanning electron microscope picture. And uh, it's really a cool picture. And this was really kind of a cold spray. You can see there's a lot of unmelted particles here. But you also see all those holes in there. That's what it causes the porosity when you get that shadowing effect and, um, and, and you just have places where the coating is missing. Also, when we do uh, grinding on this, on this and polishing of the finished part, sometimes those unmelted particles will pull out and they'll create a little hole in the top of the coating. So it's kind of like if you have your chocolate chip cookie, the chocolate chip pops out. And then yeah. there's a hole where the chocolate chip was. So that's kind okay. of what an unmelted particle would be. We move on. Then this one here, you can see that this is a part that was was sprayed. And where the red arrow is, you can see there's like a different gray color. That's the actual coating right there. Right to the right of it is the base material. It's really hard to see in this picture. But where the arrow is, is this is really fine little speckles. And uh, that's what the porosity is. And Sometimes customers will see that with the uh, with their eye, and uh, they don't like it. And if you take like a 15x mic uh, microscope on there, a magnifying glass, you'll see that fine porosity. Let's let's go to the next picture. You might be able to see a little bit of it there. Again, it's going to be how good the representation is of the picture, and uh, it's just very very hard to get a good picture of this this kind of stuff. 
if you go to the next picture, this is magnified up much higher. So this is what that ground surface would look like if you put a really good microscope on it. And again, you'll see those holes. And one of the common questions would be, well, was that an unmelted particle that got pulled out? Or is that actual real porosity? Is that real holes in my coating? Mm -hmm. um, either way, if it's unmelted particles, that can be a problem and can be as much of a problem as the, uh, as the porosity itself. If we take a look at the next picture, this is even at a higher magnification. And you can see there's actual some holes there, the porosity, but other areas you can see is like a gray matter in that, in that uh, dark area. Well, that's actually some kind of inclusion or some kind of oxide or uh, something that's stuck in the coating. Uh, again, you still have to ask the question, was that something that was pulled out when they were polishing it? Uh, or was it something that was really there? The very left side there, you can see like this light gray streaky area. That's actually oxides in there. And if you look closely, you can almost see the layers of the thermal spray as it was sprayed on there. You'll see how those little gray lines actually follow, make a pattern from left to right. That is like the thickness of the coating. And that's a really big clue when you're looking at these metallographic pictures. Am I looking at real porosity or am I looking at something that was pulled out? So if the hole is much bigger than what the coating thickness is, that obviously had to be something pulled out because you couldn't line up two holes on a normal thermal spray coating with each, with each layer. Mm -hmm. Let's kind of put your Sherlock Holmes hat on and <laughs> take a look at these micros and try and figure out what's really going on. Yeah, now this is the other problem you have is this is a constant battle with the laboratory because the coating engineer is going to say, well, you messed it up when you mounted it and polished it and did all this magnifying stuff to it. My coating's good. So you, you kind of messed it up. But the uh, lab guy is going to be saying, oh, no, no, you got a lousy coating. But th this next picture is probably a really great example of of where you can clearly see unmelted particles. So you see there's like this circular particles, round versus almost oblong. Yeah. You can picture there where one of those particles could actually pulled out so when it was being polished. Either way, this is a this is not a good coating because there's a lot of unmelted particles. There was something wrong with the parameters. It's a very loose, I call it a loose coating. And uh, these particles would end up uh, dropping out anyway and and you wouldn't want this coating on your actual part it'd be a, it'd so, be a bad so what part. would happen in this if this is the coating you got what what break it down how how fast does this fail it's a hard answer a hard question to answer it could actually fail when they're trying to grind it it could just like crumble and spall off okay if they could get a good uh, finish on it well they wouldn't get a good finish because they'd have a lot of holes you'd see the holes on the surface Right. Uh, if you still push forward and try to use this coating, depending on what it's being used for, like if it's in a what I call a bearing seal area, where there's a lot of friction on it and there's a lot of pressure on it, the, the coating is going to break down quickly. So it, 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 there's no straight, simple answer to it is to it is. But it, but any lab guy would not accept this coating and really any engineer wouldn't accept it either. It would be no, this this isn't very good. Now, this is a great picture. This is a picture of a really good coating. And as you take a look there, there's some particles there that kind of look like unmelts, but but not really. This was an HVOF coating, high velocity oxygen fuel. And uh, these coatings, this actually might have been HVAF, a high velocity air fuel. I, I forget which one this is. Mm -hmm. But sometimes your particles don't fully melt, but they start to melt. Okay, so that particle right there is one that's that hit hard. It splat it but it didn't fully splat out. And you can see to the right of it, you can almost see the thickness of the coating there between the layers. So that's kind of what the layer of the coatings look like. But none of that pulled out, so it's a nice tight coating. Uh, you'll see some oxide, those darker areas there are some oxides in there. And um, and, and it, again, there's very, very low porosity, but that's what you get with these high velocity coatings. The porosity kind of gets hammered out. So this was a really good coating on this particular one. When we have porosity, what can we do about it? Well, you're going to always have some porosity, and I'll have a slide up here later that shows you what the typical porosities are. Uh, a little porosity is okay. We expect it, and we mm -hmm. can seal that with what's called penetrating sealers. And uh, we have a couple different kinds. We have some that you spray on and some that you brush on. 
but they're they're all these solvent based ones that are very thin and it just like weep into the into the surface and they'll seal up the porosity so uh, water or chemicals those kind of things don't penetrate into the coating and damage your coating okay now with all that let's blow this up a little bit and look at the coating in the upper left hand corner with what i've just trained you on with coatings is that a good coating or a bad coating mm. when it comes to porosity now i'll give you a hint you see the okay. red to the right there that kind of yeah. would be the normal surface is if if this okay. yeah kind of put it in there so what do you think this is a good coating or a bad coating it's tough. I wasn't ready for a test, but uh, yeah. I, I mean, based on how you've taught me, I'd say that this probably isn't a great one. I don't think this is good. Well, it's a great coating. Oh, it is. <laughs> yeah, but here's the reason why. It's for a different reason. With the coating we had it develop where we want it 35% porosity, which normally is lousy. <laughs> you don't okay. want that much porosity. So it was a trick question. And, okay, uh, you got me. <laughs> yeah, I did. I did. So the uh, the objective with this, and this was a very difficult one to achieve because we wanted good bond strength, but we still wanted a lot of porosity because this was used on an implant and we wanted the bone to grow into that. So if you go to the next picture, this is actually one of the micros we did when we developed this coating for a knee implant. This is, we had a coating chamber that we built, Thermal Spray Depot built a coating chamber for a customer up in uh, Michigan. And we developed this coating and we got all the way to the point where we had the uh, master file submitted to the FDA. Everything was good. And we actually had a partnership with them. And unfortunately, uh, the other partner passed away. So this project ah. went away quickly. But at any rate, we, uh, we developed this. It took, uh, took a little bit of time to get developed, but we we're very happy with what the coating we had. So anyway, sometimes porosity is good. So it's yeah. in this in this case, that's what we wanted was something that the coating would adhere into. This is some of your typical porosities we'll see in coatings. So you get the best from the HVOF and the HVAF. It's, they're under 1%. Um, and that's generated by uh, the uh, liquid fuel guns and by the gaseous fuel guns. Uh, I guess I could throw some names around the JP series guns and the Diamond Jet series guns, the Stellite guns they all can get this uh, less than 1% porosity. Uh, plasma also can get less than 1% poros porosity. But mm -hmm. for other reasons, plasma has a softer coating. And, that, and that's an, actually a topic for another day. And we have something called cold spray that you can get less than 1%. But that's pretty specialized. It's very soft materials. And uh, it's used high velocities from uh, from different ways of generating. It just uses high pressure gases to get high velocity of particles. Now, the more common ones that we see in the shops, uh, repair shops, there's the combustion powder coatings. You can get less than 3% with those. And uh, twin wire electric arc, that's very common out there. That typically has 3 to 5% porosity. So some people shy away from that because of that porosity. But again, uh, for the most part, it's not a problem when it's done with the right thicknesses. We use the right sealers. And same with the combustion wire, that's 3 to 5%. So that's your lesson on porosity today. Yeah, no, I appreciate it. Yeah, I learned a lot, and and that's fascinating that there's different levels and different and, and different uses, like purposeful uses for for low porosity, or, or you know, I think that that's yeah. something that I definitely didn't take into account. Also, I want a piece of cheese. Uh, okay. I'm hungry. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we'll have to do that. Yes, and uh, have a cracker with that, right? Yeah. Oh, for sure. Yeah. yeah.